Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about how to heal from narcissistic abuse. And this is more specifically for family. And I'm talking about more going no contact. And I know under some circumstances, people can't do that. But if you want to hang on, you can give, um, possibly get some good tips and let me know your thoughts down in the uh, comment section. So what I'm going to say, learn from me. Don't make the mistakes that I made because I was doing so well and I took a step back and I'm going to be truthful and I had to let my tribe know what was going on. I can't be out here lying to y'all because we're a community. That's how I look at it. Anywho, what happened is I, th I think I talked a little bit about finding out that people had been um, calling my phone saying my mother was sick. I didn't know to what extent somebody said she was on a deathbed. She was with my aunt back in the Midwest. I didn't know what was going on. <clears throat> I did not reach out to people trying to figure out what was going on. I started getting more calls. So I got another call from somebody I haven't talked to since the family reunion, like in 2011. And I always thought that this person was cool despite the facts. See, that's the thing. We can't, and we and many me can't go off of, oh, somebody seemed cool at one point. When they do something that's not cool, that's when the, when the reassessment should be done on this person's characteristic. I get to the family reunion about 2011. Like I said, I only seen this person growing up. This is a way older cousin, um, my mom's first cousin or whatever, something like that. I hadn't seen this person in years. I, he picked me up with his girlfriend and we were going, he was taking us out to eat. All of a sudden, he's like, yeah, you and your mom and your sister should work on what's going on in your relationship. And I'm like, I think the last time I saw him before, that was 10 years before. We've never had a relationship other than a few kikis, how you doing, how school and stuff like that. And I always thought he was a cool cousin. That's it. So I'm like, where are you getting this from? And he's like, he had talked to my middle sister or whatever. And she had told him we weren't doing good. We were still talking at this time. I didn't know anything about narcissistic abuse at that time or no contact. Me and my family were still talking. So she had run her mouth to this dude and then apparently, um, and then telling him she didn't want to be like our mother. And I guess she had saw she was going in that direction, which she was right, you know, but she had never talked to me about that. But Anywho, and so he's like, y'all need to work on it. He never asked me my point of view, what was going on. The thing was, I was in California. I would talk to them periodically. My sister maybe once a year to say happy birthday or to call and wish her child a happy birthday or something like that. And whatever was going on with my mother, I was never the aggressor in that relationship. So I don't know what the many narcissists at the time had told this man about what was going on with our specific part of the family. But he's all like, you need to be the bigger person, get a hold of this. You're in psychology. You should know how to deal with this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm in the car trapped because I'm riding with him. I'm like, what the heck? And so, anywho, I had let it go, and I had explained what happened, you know, what was going on in the relationship just to get my side of it. But I'm like, you know, th that's the one problem. I had to heal from narcissistic abuse. Stop trying to give your side of it. And I'm talking to me in this camera, too. Forget what these people think. These people don't know you like that. They have poor boundaries. Haven't seen you in 20 years or whatever and think that they can come and comment on your life. Who are these people? And like with him, I don't know his life. I don't know anything about him other than he had a good job where um, the type of work that was known for um, where we live at. A really good job. And, and I'm like, who do you think you are to come to me and say something? So anywho, fast forward. So now he calls me through Messenger in that dang old Messenger. He calls me through Messenger and he's like, oh, and I answer because I'm like, I still hadn't reassessed who he really is. And I answer and he's all like, hey, have you heard about your mom and this, did, 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 did. And I'm thinking, okay, I haven't spoken to my mom in six years. She hasn't spoken to me. This has been mutual. She has stopped speaking to me. I sp stopped speaking to her. It wasn't just like I just cut her off, which I did on my end, but she cut me off too because I called out and said, wait, what are you doing? You keep starting drama in my, in our relationships as a family and with me and my sisters you say one or the other go back behind the other you lie to this one lie on that one and when I said it it was like a blow up a narcissistic injury I had called her out I was supposed to be dumb and naive like she called me my whole life I wasn't supposed to be smart enough to see what she was doing and put the pieces together he calls me I'm like no I don't know anything he's like oh you know trying to go in see this is the slick stuff they do they try to butter you up first Oh, I know we don't talk, but, you know, I see you on Facebook and I like your stuff. Lies. 
lies. The last time I remember him saying anything on Facebook, I had put something on there and he said something, basically a short line that contradicted what I said. So I never even commented on it and liked it. That should have been another sign. He don't like nothing on my page. Even when I have put out books and even though I have put out two books so far, I have republished them. Uh, you know, added stuff to the book. So I've had more than two book launches. He's never commented, never liked, never loved. And he lied on, in the phone talking about, yeah, you know, I like your stuff and I love. And, you know, I, I only read the Bible, he says. And he's like, so, you know, I've never bought your books. This man is retired and made good money all his life. That I do know about him. So you can even buy my book or t share my book on your page. Even if you don't buy it, share share it on your page say congratulations but see this is all lies he don't care about my life he just want to act like it so he can act like so, so um so i could forget about them 11 years we had no relationship we didn't even really never had a relationship but he want to butter me up and then talking about i'm coming to you my smart cousin because i know your education more buttering up going the intellectual route so i should have hung up but yeah so basically the whole conversation is oh you want to be the bigger person and i'm like no you know and this is another thing with these people with they flying monkeys this is what he is they come to you because they know that these people are wrong but they don't want to do anything about it they want you to be the bigger person they want you to be stupid okay Okay. how to get over narcissistic abuse stop answering calls from flying monkeys and if you don't know they're flying monkey all the stuff i said about him those are clues they flying monkeys and that means i should have hung up and if it happens to you baby do the same thing and hang up that dang phone the minute that a person tells you to be the bigger person and they know it's a history of abuse that is toxic and dysfunctional and that dang family tree need to be cut out and put up pulled up by the roots because it ain't no good and it need to be burned and destroy it because it's toxic. I said it. So yeah, be the bigger person and I know you know what to do in psychology. You know, and he's telling me about his substance abuse. Um credentials or whatever he has and i'm like um he's like well you know and i started mentioning narcissism and the community and the things i do online and i'm like no i'm not i'm not dealing with that i've been so much happier i'm at a place of peace i'm not going to go back to toxic behavior just because it's called family i understand that that's important for you but it's not important for me and not something that i will do and then he started recounting stories of narcissism on my mom that he knows about even be i guess before i was born which means he he knows what narcissism he knew what narcissism was he's done his research okay and he had examples of my mom and other people in our family who i even knew was narcissist so this man totally knows what it is and so he's experienced it um or seen it and but he still wants me to just but, but the basics of the conversation is for me to get over it and so what and so I go over, and I shouldn't have done this because this is explaining people, and this is giving energy. Don't give your energy. This is how you maintain a healing after narcissism abuse. Don't give your energy by explaining. These people do not care. No matter what I said, you know, he had a comeback. Go be the bigger person. Oh, you, you can do it, and you can do this. You know what? He don't care that I was abused emotionally he don't care and the reason why these flying monkeys don't care one is because they're probably a narcissist so they want to protect each other they know that you have the light and they know you are not of their dark kingdom and they want to pull you back in because when you have broken free you shine light on that darkness and everything this it reminds me of the bible whatever is in the dark is going to come to light and this is the season that god is bringing and exposing all these narcissists and all these toxic people and they don't like it because the internet is filled with it baby and they want to go back into hiding these abusers in your family and my family they want to go back to shh don't tell anybody what's going on. Be abused and be a punk and let us walk over you forever. That's your role. We designed that role. But no, I've broken free of the system. You will not decide the role for me. They come along and want to tell you what family is, what love is. Who came up with these terms? Who defined love? 
you know, who defined family. I do not subscribe to the way they define love and family. I have broken free from that and you can break free from that too by ignoring these people's calls, protecting yourself on messenger if you have to, blocking it where people can't randomly call you and randomly send you a video if you don't want that video, blocking them from Facebook, doing whatever you have to do. Because even, I'm gonna tell you how he, he got in the sneak one on me and it took me getting off the call to process everything what happened. He, because I, I mentioned the abuse and he's like because i he lived um far away from not far away but like 45 minutes away and we didn't see him often so i was like maybe he didn't know but once i started recounting so it turns out this man knew but i bet he never confronted my mother because he knew she would cuss him out but see he think i was the soft target which i was at the time that i was the soft target so he come to me but you know, and I was like, Did, have you talked to my sisters? I mean, he's like, I'm trying to get them on the phone. So I'm like, okay, at least his toxic self was trying to reach out to them. And later I found out he was still trying to reach out to my middle sister. He did get a hold of my younger sister and told her all that dumb stuff to be the bigger person. And she really ain't even involved in this. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even know why that conversation was reserved for her, but it's the middle one. But anywho, he went to the younger one because that's the one he could get on the phone about be the bigger person. But I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. And he all like, I want to put the family together and I want to get my smart cousin talking about me to help me do it first off this family has been dysfunctional for years he even started going on other tangents about um uh, people i mean con doing con jobs on him recently family which i understand because these are close family members i don't have anything to do with them but i mean close in relation done some crazy stuff one kind of you know, another one still drinking and slurring on the phone and all kind of stuff. And I said, yeah, that makes sense because that's what they're doing. They've been doing it. And then he, here he go, trying to make it like I'm toxic. Well, when I talk to them, they don't never say anything negative about you. They just say you have your degree and they believe you're doing well and they're proud of you. I said, yeah, I can understand how it would be confusing to you to think that I'm saying something negative about them. Because truth can sometimes seem like that to people that's not ready for that truth. I said something along those lines because if you're the one bringing the conversation to me telling me he conned you and if I say that sounds about right because that's what he does you should have been thanking me because if you ever dumb enough to let him con you again I've already given you the heads up that this is what he does but see the cousin I was talking to older than me so he already know and see this man and I don't know his pockets but like I said he has a, a, a long good work history okay so if you're really concerned about the family Instead of trying, he was trying to put a family reunion together and got my email so he can call me later. I mean, email me about the family reunion. You so concerned about the family reunion. Well, why don't you go pay for some mental health services, some substance abuse services, and um, get to the root of what's going on in this dysfunctional mental tree? See, another reason I say this is how you heal is to stay away from all of these people, even if you suspect that they want you to go back to the abuse. If, they, if you ever thought they was a flying monkey, cut these people off if you can. If you can. I know in some circumstances you can. Chop it off because they don't mean you well. These people come back to you, and this is not a bad thing. All of us are mostly about ourselves, whether we recognize it or not, we are. So this thing about I want the family back together that's not a his desire for me that's a need he feeling fulfilling within himself and these are just assumptions i'm making but could it be that if he is the one who gets me and my sisters and my mother back together he can hmm yeah i did that i put my family back together it was toxic as hell and i pretended it wasn't but for the sake of me feeling good about myself hmm i put the family back together that was me. Ha ha ha. Look at God using me. That could be one thing. Another thing, putting the family back together. Could be because he's toxic and a narcissist himself. I'm not saying he is. But it could be. Wanting, to put, want, wanting me to get back in my place and be a flunky and shut up. Because he could be a narcissist himself. You know? Know a lot about narcissism. I, I don't know. Could have just done the research. But I'm just throwing some suggestions out here. Let me know what you think in the comments. Go ahead and like and subscribe and share this video if it's resonating with you. And again, thank you for all my subscribers. We almost at a thousand. Yeah. Anywho, another, what's another reason, hmm, that these people can want you to be put back, put back together? Hmm. I'm trying to think.
Well, yeah, that about, I think that that about sums it up. I just think it is. It's just a, just a power play. They just want to be pretending like they care. And my thing is, you don't care about me even later. So even after the conversation, when I realized all the slick stuff, I texted him and I was like, um, are you going to reach out? This is before I knew he did again, reach out to my sisters. Are you reaching out to them and telling them to be the bigger person? Or is this something you just reserved for me? I said, I'm concerned about you reaching out to me because there's no relationship here and I told you about abuse and your response to me was basically to move get over it and continue to, and try to have a relationship with people that I told you caused me severe pain this uh, emotional dysregulation and that I am have never been happier away from them and you pull it trying to pull me back to that I said I can't trust that you think well of me and that you want the best for me he like oh I'm sorry that you feel that way but if you can just look at the heart of the message that I said so basically like shut up and just do what I say. See, that's the, that's the third thing I was trying to think of. That's that the control. See, they want to be able to tell you what to do. Okay. And then act so they can also go around and pretend like when they telling people, Oh yeah, my family, this and my family, this knowing your family ain't sugar, honey, iced tea, sweetie. And it ain't been nothing since great grandma died. And even before that, people was disjointed, if you really want to know the truth. But it was better. Your family ain't been sugar, honey, iced tea. And you know it. I'm not talking about you want to put something together. Who are you to put something together? And then you know how, um, how em not, not embarrassing, but you know how um, much of the nerve he had. Because knowing my background and trying to tell me I need therapy. And that's the thing. And I hate to say this, but sweetie, I'm going to say it and you're going to feel how you're going to feel. Some people that's not therapists, and this is not all, and he works in um, substance abuse, so I'm assuming he works with other therapists. He mentioned therapy to me, and I was like, yeah, I can see how you might think that because when people tell their truth, people can think that they may need therapy, and especially not knowing a, um, a lot about narcissism, even though you know some, I said, you know, there's a thing called no contact, and that is within the narcissistic community, which you can also look at as part of the mental health. So I said, yes, you're mentioning my background, and I'm doing everything that my background has taught me to do so I'm in line with that if that's the way you want to go with this conversation you know because I'm saying first off sweetie you're not gonna come and talk to me about mental health and think you're gonna win that conversation because I will pull out that um intellectual spirit on you real quick and go to town sweetie because I got too many student loans for you to think you're gonna come with me with some mental health baby I'm I, I got all the time and all the smoke because it's too much student loans on my back not to have it come Stay in your line in substance abuse, sweetie, because it ain't the same. So, yeah, and he's like, I was like, and as you know, mental health therapists, they do already, uh, uh, what, what's a good mental health therapist who hasn't already had their share of mental health therapy? So thank you, but I've had my share of therapy, and, and that's what makes me more comfortable to stand in my truth. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, he's like, mental health therapists, I always say that they already had their therapy and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, he that kind of person to be at the job with us trying to tell us what to do. Like, sweetie boo boo, stay in your lane. I get that sometimes. It be people, they, they'll work with you and they'll be like the receptionist or somebody and we all need each other. I'm not saying that. But they'll be like whispering like you can't hear them like, oh, or some of them get bold to even tell you, oh, I could have been a mental health therapist if I had went to school. Because, you know, I think I know more than some of people in mental health and some of y'all know. it. But, you know, I just didn't go to school. And that's the only reason I'm not a mental health. So they really be hating and they be mad because you got that degree. But I don't know why they be hating because it ain't a big thing to me because the loans cost too much, sweetie. It be like over $22,000, 22000 just for one semester, over 44000 a year. So they should be happy they didn't go to school. But these people be in co competition and they be jealous and be mad because you got the degree and they don't. I don't know why. Stupid. You should be happy you don't got um, all them student loans. But that's what they do and that's what he remind me of. Because why would people have to put him in his place telling him he, they already had the therapy? And then, so that's that. Then I made the mistake. I, I was talking to somebody on the phone. Another, um, this other family member was like, I found out that um, an uncle 
had a, said he had choice words for me because I wasn't taking care of my mother and finding out what was going on with her, whatever it is. I'm still really confused and I don't know because I am no contact and I'm staying on that no contact. I don't care what people feel about it. I don't care if people say, well, you don't know how you're going to feel when your mom died because my mom died. I don't give a hell about your mama and how you felt after it because it ain't the same relationship as my mama. And so I'm going to feel how I feel. I don't know how I'm going to feel because she's not dad. I don't want to pretend that I know how I feel. But I'm standing on what I'm standing on. Before, I guess, I think they said she did have the brain surgery. My sister texted me when I was asking her, was all these other narcs trying to get a hold of her? And I think she said she had brain surgery or something. My mother knew she was having brain surgery before this. People know the consequences of brain surgeries. This woman made a conscious decision not to involve me in this before this. This woman wanted nothing to do with me. This woman hates me. This woman is jealous of me has been jealous of me since I was a little kid. She hates me. She don't want me to be a part of her life. So why am I going to go force myself on a part of her, on her? And I heard that I guess some periods of her memory is missing now. I'm not, you know, I was the first born child. I, this woman, I was born in the seventies. This woman, if she got some of her memory left, some of it go back to when I was around. There's a choice. They even had her, my sister said they had done a zoom thing for her, for her birthday. If she can get on some dang on zoom, she in enough good health. And if she's not, that's not my business, you know? Who is my mother? Who is my father? My cousins, my sisters, those that do the will of God. I'm all in the Bible. Check it for yourself. That's who my family is. So I feel nothing bad about that. Honor your mother and father. I'm honoring her by staying away and letting God's wrath, punishment, whatever he doing with her life be done. Because she's had ample opportunity to get things right. And so my prayer is for her is that she do not be in pain because there was a time up until I was five and I was discarded. Hey, and there was moments of specs when she, when she let the narcissism sit down before it bubbled back up. And for that, I wish her well and comfort and that she's in good hands. That's what I can do, okay? And that's what I've done. I didn't have to do that, but that's what I've done. There goes the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Father, in Jesus' name we go. And going on right back about my life. How to stay out, out of this narcissism stuff. How to heal. Move on with your life. Don't get back involved with these toxic family members. Whatever you doing, is it work? You got some art, you got some books, you got your YouTube channel, whatever you doing, focus on that. Focus on you and your family. Stop trying to worry about what other people think about you, how they gonna think about your moves. Go to work. If you want to be an entrepreneur, work on that. If you got a hobby, you like to play basketball, you like to do baseball, you like to do hair and makeup, focus on that. You like to bake, bake you something, try to sell it. If you're into that kind of stuff, get multiple incomes, you know, that's the things that I try to do. Focus on that because that hour long conversation I had with the flying monkey slash maybe narcissist, not sure, could have been promoting my books, could have been making a YouTube channel. These people suck your energy and get you off track so that you can focus on stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you. Then here go my other mistake. And I hope you still stand because this is a good story. Don't you leave. Look, here I go. It's embarrassing to tell you, but I'm going to be real. So it got back to me that my uncle, who has been a drug addict slash alcoholic slash freeloader slash a whole bunch of slashes that I'm not going to even say because it's just too embarrassing, even on YouTube, even though know, y'all don't know him. So um, had choice words for me because I wasn't there for my mother. And so somebody did say, oh, you should call him. And this was a dumb mistake, but I fell for it. But anywho. So I got his number and I called him exactly like this because I was ready for all the smoke. I got on the phone and I said, hey, how you doing? I heard you had choice words for me, but I just know that that can't be true. Seeing as we haven't um, spoken in years, so I just want to call you to see if that's the case. And he's like, oh, 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 well, I do got choice words. I said, oh, you do? Oh, tell me. He's like, yeah, because do you talk, has you talked to your mom and blah, blah, blah. I said, I think you, I said, no, I haven't. And I said, I think you already knew that answer before you even asked. So what is it that you want? Even though I called him and he's like, oh, but you know, your mom and you should talk. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If you talk to her, you done well. You don't determine what I need to do and don't tell me what I need to do. He's like, but yeah, but she's um not well and you should be checking on. I said, uh-uh, stop. I said, the last time I talked to you, you weren't talking to one of your daughters. Are you talking to your daughter? 
He's like, yeah, I've talked to her since then, and we talk, and I said, well, then again, you, you're doing well. If you're talking to your daughter, that's where your concern should be. And then next thing I know, the phone went dead. I thought he hung up on me. I, t I told my sister, the, 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 um, not the middle one, I don't mess with her. The other one, I said, I texted, I said, yeah, he hung up on me. He called me the next day, girl. I should have hung up on him. This is what I mean. This is how you stay away from these people. You see they toxic, don't answer their calls. And this is where I messed up. I answered. And I, he was like, I want to talk to you because you said, and because he was telling me that I know it was my mom's birthday. And I said, look, dude, I'm 43 years old. What would make you think I don't know it's my mother's birthday? You know, and he was like, but yeah, I'm 60 something and that's my sister. And I, and I said, let me stop you. He was like, no, but I want to talk. I said, no, stop. We will talk. But what you will not do is talk over me. I said, we'll have a conversation, but both of us will speak. And if you can agree to that, we'll continue. Is that understood? Because I wasn't playing with him. He said, yeah, we can both. And then he went, I should have hung up. He was slurring. I know he was drunk, high, something like that. He couldn't stay on the right path. Or the, he was going off on tangents. And I was thinking, you know, I, I ain't talked to him in like six years. I probably ain't going to talk to him in another good six. But forget that. Stay on your boundaries. And I'm talking to me. I'm talking to you. Another way to heal is to keep those boundaries tight. You put them boundaries of what you would accept, what you, what you wouldn't accept in place for a reason. Stand on top of that. So I'm listening to this slurring and all this stuff. And I basically kept just telling him to mind his business. I look up, it's like 45 minutes after I get off the phone. Oh no. And I called him out and I'm like, you knew how she was all them years. You ain't said or did nothing, but you think you're going to come and tell me what I need to do. I said, and this was the first time I ever told him about me knowing he was a drunk and alcoholic. I mean, a, a drug addict. I was like, you've been a drunk and a um, drug addict all my life. And you're not the person I take advice from. And I, I take um, my life serious and you're not the person I go to for life direction. And he ain't say nothing. And I was like, and you know how she is because she been treating you like crap your whole life and you been allowing it. So don't think that I'm about to do it since you do it. He like, she my daddy. She my daddy firstborn child. She my daddy firstborn child. That my sister. This freaking function I should have hung up. Y'all don't be dumb like me. I said, oh, so that means it's okay for her to verbally abuse you all those years? And then he started talking about the... um issue that got her where she is now um the medical issue i asked he's like i asked her about it and she kicked me out I was like yeah mother don't be asking me about that get the hell out of my house and kicked me out and threatened to beat my a and all this kind of stuff and i'm like yeah and so you want me to go back to that but that's my daddy, oldest child. And he starts saying, because my name did this. So you know what? We got drug abuse going on, alcoholism, and that may make him seem like a narcissist. but Or he may be a narcissist too, because he kept on saying his name. I'm such and such and such. I'm the son of such a... I'm like, y'all, y'all freaking personality disorders. Oh, God. So... Yeah, and the crazy thing is the first flying monkey, the one that called me, um, you know, talking about, well, you know how your family is, and we got this and this. Yeah, I know who they are, and I can choose to be away from it because I don't have to deal with mental illness at work and then come home and be a part of this dysfunction for some people who don't care to get better. All of them the same. Yeah, I, and this is the thing, why go back? You know, people would lie to you. The church would lie and be talking about how much people change. Some people do, but I don't see it a lot. I don't. I don't. Because the last time I talked to that uncle, he was slurring and on drugs and all other kind of things. Last time I talked to the flying monkey, he was telling me to be, good, be the bigger person and trying to manipulate me, talking about my degree and education and all this. They still own the same stuff. And all they want you to do is just be lost and be back toxic. They don't want you to flourish because they, they watching you on the low. Know about my books. Know about all this. Ain't share nothing. Ain't said happy, happy for you. Ain't said nothing, honey. Okay. Even when other family members will take in. And, and I'm not saying this about my all my family because that is not the case. I had a lot of family who did support me and took pictures of my books and sent it to me. Posted on Facebook. Shared it with people. For that, if you all are watching, I am grateful. So don't ever think that these videos are about y'all. Y'all know the toxic ones that I'm talking about. 
If you ain't the toxic, you ain't triggered by this video because you know that I ain't talking to you. But if you feel a, t a little bit of, oh my God, is she talking to me? Well, then you know you toxic and get some help. I can give you some referrals. Just ask. I will. I'll give you some referrals. Or you can call on the back of your insurance and they should be able to help you find some help. And that's okay. And share this video with them. And I, I can also give them a bit of um, knowledge of what's going on with the dysfunction. If you like, I, I would reach out. But no, no pressure, no pressure. So, yeah. Let me know your thoughts um, in the video. Basically, what I will say that I have protected myself on all parts now. It will be no more answering the calls of flying monkeys. There will be no more calls of people that's asking me to be go back to hellish situations and be a bigger person. No. If people want you to be in these situations, get away, get, get far away. Another way, and I'll say this in the end, another way to protect yourself is even your friends, whatever they are, these people that you're giving more to them than they're giving to you, if you can, get away. You're pushing all your everything in there. You're calling them. You're congratulating them. You're sharing their businesses on Facebook. They never share yours. They never like anything you do. Get the heck away from these people. You go around them and they send little snide comments talking about your hair, your dress they don't like your earrings why you gotta do this why you buy this with your money get away the way you help yourself is cutting if you can i'm not forcing anybody to cut your family off you can go slight contact i don't teach slight contact with parents because i don't believe in dealing with these narcissistic flying monkeys at all despite my little transgression last week but i'm back on my game no i don't believe in the covert and dealing with them no i believe in cutting it off Cut, cutting them off but you do what's best for you because these are your parents at the end of the day and you have to live with that decision i don't but for me how to heal cutting these parents off first because they are the ones that groomed you to be um abused molested by them by other family members and by everyone they are the source of what has been happening with you and while you're watching this video and while you've probably watched a hundred other ones like this because of your trifling mama daddy or both or one of uh, you know getting rid of the toxic siblings that you know are flying monkeys and are there to support your family in their toxicity because they feel if they stand by your mother or daddy they are finally going to have the shine that you had when you were around and they know that parent don't really love them but they are still naive and who don't want to be loved by their parents and do everything they want to do so they want to stick around and try to get some shine now that you're gone get rid of these friends who try to convince you to that your mother and your father is like everybody else's mother and father despite you telling them for years or however long how toxic your family is you know that your stories are more crazier than theirs with their family and they know it but they don't want to hear it and instead of just saying hey maybe you should talk to a therapist because i don't think i'm the best one to talk to love you but that's just a lot for me instead of them to be up front with you they will gaslight you and make you think something's wrong with you I had a friend like that for years and finally had to cut her off. And my life has been so much better. Other than that, she was not a bad person and it hurts to have to cut her off. But I cannot have anybody in my life telling me that I'm not being abused and it's me. Because I was looking to her and going to her, oh, am I wrong? Because I was very uncertain of myself and she couldn't be um a decent human being and to let me know that hey dude this is not right what's happening to you she pretended that nothing was going on and maybe i can't even be mad because her mother is toxic and she get around her mother and start talking like a five-year yeah mommy yeah mommy and we about 40 years old at almost so maybe i can't even hold that against her because her look like her family tree was toxic too but even if it was that i do not I wouldn't wish that on me or anybody else to be around them. The best thing me and her could have did was part, part our ways. I did it and let her go on and heal. I pray that's what she does and I go on and heal, but I will not be around anybody. And you got to watch some of these friends because they'll tell you, oh, you shouldn't be like that with your mom. You shouldn't be like that with your cousin or friend. Make that relationship right. And as soon as a family member or anybody mess around with them and do one thing, they'll cut them off. But they won't. They, they, and they'll be adamant about it. But I'm like, but didn't you tell me I should stay? But you just cut this person off so you don't think I saw that? So you got to watch these people who will tell you to do one thing and then they won't do it. They'll tell you to stay and endure, but 
they will quit a job. Well, if I should stay and endure, why don't you stay and endure your horrible job? I should stay and go through this abuse, but you just divorce your spouse. Shouldn't you have stayed and endured whatever cheating STDs and A's or whatever you got? You telling me to endure abuse, why not Why not you? They've moved places. I don't feel this city is good for me no more. I gotta get out of here. Well, why didn't you stay and handle that situation? You told me I should stay and handle this situation, handle that city where you in. Oh no. You, you want best for you, but I should um, have all the scraps and the horrible things in life. No, you got to clear out everything. Even in your job, if you're trying to stay strong in a job where it's a bunch of narcissists and they teaming up on you and you got people telling you, hold on, you like the job. No, it's going to be okay, sweetie. Do you know how many people die early because of stress, anxiety, and heart attacks on Monday morning because of horrible jobs? You have to get rid of it all. And that's one thing that what made me successful at doing it. I got rid of it all. When I blocked all these types of people, I got out of that temp job where it was a bunch of crazy people all i was doing was complaining and bothering people that i knew about the complaints that should have been a sign that i had to leave if you're complaining about people things situations those are the things you do get away from it and find your bliss whatever that is find your creativity stick with the family who loves you even if that's just the family you created for yourself stop going through the toxic and that is how you heal let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you want to book a session with me to talk about narcissism, to talk about uh, anything going regarding how to heal from stress, depression, anxiety, trouble with your friends, uh, you can book me through Visabook. Whoever you are who sent uh, me, got my phone number and texted it, you are wrong for that. We are not friends like that. We're YouTube buddies, but we're not friends like that. I get paid for what I do. I can't go to your job and get you to do something for free, and neither would I dare call you. I mean, text you on your personal number trying to get some services for free if anybody watches my channel for any amount of time you see that there's a link in the bottom that tells you how to book a session with me i also have email that you can send me an email but what i'm doing and i don't feel bad about it because some people think that psychology should be free sweet tea forty four thousand dollars a year okay and that is not free all that got to be paid back so if you it, these people who think that it should be free y'all need to go to these people that's milking the psychologists and mental health people out of all of our money and you tell them it needs to be free because it ain't free for us so no i'm not taking nobody texts asking me no questions this is my personal time you want to get a hold of me all these loans I got to pay back, you going to have to pay me so I can pay the loans back. This is all a dysfunctional system in mental health, okay? And I'm only one step above the patient, the client, according to this system, okay? It's the big dogs at the top that's bringing in all the money. It ain't me because they got me. Want, they want their money back from me with student loans. And I'm trying to be on another forbearance or whatever it's called so they ain't getting their money right now because I don't feel like giving them their money, okay? So, no, don't hit me up. Don't find my number online and don't text me because I'm not texting you back. Go through the proper channels, okay? And especially, I'm thinking, yeah, that's how you do it. Thank you. Bye.